welcome back welcome back thank you for staying with us if you're just joining your own time for the first conversation of the day after the great banter that we had with my co-host so today we're going to talk about something that is close to the hearts of youths and this is my on matters employment so how can we create sustainable employment not just in type of employment sustainable employment and wealth for the youth and for this, we are joined by Anthony Kirori, who had introduced him. He's the CEO of Green Pencils Limited. Green Pencils Limited is the company. And he's here to tell us, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the one to threes on how to do <laughs> this. We, we need to know mm -hmm. how we mm -hmm. can get mm -hmm. a sustainable employment as yes. you and get to wealth, mm -hmm. because that is the goal for most people, at least True. if not everyone. Yes. Yeah, Karim Busana, glad thank, to have you with us. Thank you very much, Stephanie. All Great right. to be here. Okay. Yes. And uh, speaking of what you do, before we get into the topic, mm -hmm. Green Pencils Limited. Yes. Uh, today is World Environment Day. Indeed Maybe, it is. You know, be. Yeah, yes. you'd be the right person to comment <laughs> something on it. What about yes. uh, saving mm -hmm. the environment? Basically, what we say is, let me say, at Green Pencils, what we do, we convert paper to wood to make pencils. Why? Uh -huh. Two reasons. One, in Kenya, you're not allowed to cut trees to mm -hmm. make pencils. So all wood and pencils are imported. Okay. So when we are Im buying imported things, basically you're exporting our money and our jobs. Mm -hmm. Yet paper comes from wood. Yeah. Yes. So why not wow. convert paper to wood? So that's what we do. Uh -huh. Second thing, this has to do with climate change and the environment, which is, as today's the World Environment Day, good to state. Uh, uh, when paper decomposes at the landfill site, mm -hmm. it forms methane gas. Methane gas is 25 times more poisonous than carbon dioxide. So mm -hmm. when you're fighting climate change, it makes sense, logical sense, to try to prevent paper from reaching the dump sites, especially when you consider that about 26% of waste in mm -hmm. landfills all over the world comprises of paper and paper waste. Yeah. Paper and paper board. Mm -hmm. So 26%, that's a quarter. And then it will form methane gas, hmm. which is 25 times more poisonous than carbon dioxide. So it makes sense to prevent paper from reaching the landfill sites. Okay. Now that's where we come in. Oh, amazing. Yes. Eco-friendly yeah. uh, pencils. Th amazing. Yes. yes, thank you. So, so now, mm -hmm. getting into uh, the topic of the day. Yes. I want you to take us back. The mm -hmm. foundation of this is mm -hmm. that last week yes. you went to uh, present at the departmental um, finance committee. And yes. Finance and national planning. Yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, you were giving reasons why mm -hmm. changes need to be done to the finance bill to suit, yes. to suit Kenyan. So maybe yes. you can share with us this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, as we start, let me ask you something. People say the sky is the limit. Sky is the limit. Yeah. Well, I, Anthony Kerori, say the sky is my playground. Welcome on board. Okay. Very good. <laughs> now, first, let's mention it's good to note that there's someone who's going to court. Mm -hmm. Suppose the court rules yeah. in favor of the pet petitioner, whoever's going to court. Mm -hmm. What happens to the finance bill? Shut down. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, l I like working with facts and figures. To me, I think the way the finance bill is structured right now is not correct. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be changed. Uh, first, it's good to point that, apart from King Solomon, nobody else had as much wisdom. <laughs> okay. So, even the president needs advisors. He True. needs to listen to other people. Mm -hmm. Now, whoever he's working with, they've given that opinion, it's good to come up with a plan B. Mm -hmm. So that's what I presented, a plan B. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at a few figures. Uh, in Kenya, mm -hmm. first of all, Kenya is, uh, our, our country is very blessed with resources. Mm -hmm. A few weeks ago, about a month ago, we were told that Kenya has got over 900 minerals. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of natural resources. Blessed, Kenya is really blessed with natural resources. Yeah. However, if you Google or you check on the countries that have minimum resources or non-natural resources, you'll find Vatican City and Costa Rica as one and two. Okay. But in the list, you'll also find Japan, Singapore, Belgium, Switzerland, among others. If you go to any road in Kenya or any parking, most cars that are parked, they're from which country? <laughs> the, the they're mentioned. from Japan. Yeah. yeah. Most cars are from Japan. They don't have any natural resources. Mm -hmm. Now, what does Japan do? Because they know they don't have any natural resources, they come to a country like ours, Kenya, and then they buy our iron ore at $75 per ton. Mm -hmm. That's about 10,000 shillings per ton. Mm -hmm. So two tons, they spent 20000 
they'll get about 60 to 65 percent of steel from that mm -hmm. and uh, so two tons they'll get between 1.2 to 1.3 tons of steel at 20,000 shillings 20. they'll go and make a Toyota RAV4 which will come back here and will buy it at 5.5 million. Wow. Let me ask you, who's the brighter one there? <laughs> who's Japan, the smarter one there? Of course. <laughs> who's the smarter one? Japan. What's the opposite of smart? Uh, <laughs> fool. <laughs> uh, so who's... Well, <laughs> we don't we, we say don't it loud. <laughs> but, but we know, yeah? Yeah, it makes <laughs> yes. a lot of sense. Uh -huh. Yes. So what I told the Finance and National Planning Committee, mm -hmm. since they are part of parliament, yeah. and parliament is what makes laws, they should make a law whereby, as a country, we should no longer export our natural resources, our raw materials in, I mean, our natural resources in the raw form. Okay. For instance, like the iron ore, we shouldn't export it that way. Mm -hmm. Instead, build steel industries here. Mm -hmm. Let's start with simple things, like spoons, sufurias, wheelbarrows. But at the same time as we are doing that, let's keep an eye into the future. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know that in Britain, in the UK rather, come 2030, no matter how rich you are, you'll not be able to buy a petrol or a diesel car hmm. in the next seven years. Because they're going electric. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So now that we'll have the raw materials, this gives us a few options. One, we can either work directly with the, the engineers there. Two, we can work with Tesla. Mm -hmm. Three, Kenyans are very innovative. The government can come up with a challenge, with a program, whereby if any engineer, anybody can design a car, can develop something that... It's either electric or uses other form, mm -hmm. maybe water, hydrogen, whatever it is. Yeah. As long as I know if I, whatever I think about can be implemented, trust you me. I mean, we are not only bright enough that it's only Mpesa that could have come from Kenya. We have we great have, minds. We have, yes, we have great minds. So mm -hmm. that's one thing that we need to do. And that would create a lot of uh, wealth. Yeah. And it's also sustainable. Let me ask you, uh, this one million houses... Mm -hmm. We have been told they'll create about 1.6 million jobs, right? Jobs, yeah. So let's say this room we are in is the one millionth unit to be built. Mm -hmm. The last, the the last, last one. one. Mm -hmm. And the people who are building it finish it today. What happens to the 1.6 million people tomorrow? Mm -hmm. They become jobless. They again. become jobless. Back to so zero. Someone can say, we'll build another million houses. Okay, fine, we'll build. But eventually you reach a place where you don't need to build anymore. No more houses can so be built. So when it's, they finish the very last unit that day, what happens the next day? Mm -hmm. Is that sustainable? No. It's not. Okay. I like working with facts and figures as I mentioned. And I've just talked about uh, Japan and Kenya. Let's look at the figures. Mm -hmm. And why it's important that we make wise decisions. Mm -hmm. Our GDP per capita in 2019... I'm choosing to work with 2019, the year before Corona, mm -hmm. was 1,970.11. GDP mm -hmm. per capita, for maybe a viewer who may not understand, yeah. is all the money in the country, all the money made within the country, divided by the total population. Mm -hmm. So all the money made in Kenya, yeah. if it was to be divided by all Kenyans, every Kenyan would have received $1,970 mm -hmm. for the year 2019. Okay. Divide that. Now, we need to change that into Kenya shillings. So maybe multiply that by 130. And then we are paid on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. So divide that by 12 months. That comes to about 21,000. Per month. Per for month. Every Kenyan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say I'm a Kenyan. And I am a Kenyan. Mm -hmm. And where I am, God has blessed us with a lot of resources. Mm. So my lifestyle is 21,000 shillings. Now, you are... Jap I'm not in other Japanese, but let's assume, yes, you're in Japan, <laughs> in or you're Japanese, yes. You are, where you are standing, you are, s uh, you are soil, mm -hmm. you are ground, zero resources. It's only helping just keep you up. Mm -hmm. to prevent That's the only work the, the ground can do. <laughs> yes, <it> just, <laughs> just holding you, uh, nothing else. Yes? Yeah. But there is a common resource that we share, yeah. brains. That's so, mm -hmm. Yes, it's, everyone has them. Eh? Yeah. yeah, but you've used your brains in such a way... Eh? Uh, your GDP, the GDP per capita for Japan in the year 2019 was 40,458. Hmm. If you multiply that by 130 to convert it to Kenya shillings, divide that by 12, mm -hmm. I think it comes to about, of, about 400,000, slightly over 400,000. 400,000 per month, per month. For, for someone. So Stephanie, <laughs> let me ask you. Yeah. I have all the resources that I have. I'm leading a lifestyle of 21K, 21,000. You have zero resources, only brains. Only brains. You've structured your cell such that, such that you're leading a lifestyle of about 400K. Mm -hmm. How will you look at me? 
Like a fool. Well, in it. Yeah. <laughs> like this is a fool, you know. Yeah. You're not using your brain. You've been laughing at me. Yeah. <laughs> in my exactly. face. Exactly. <laughs> Sinyo ne uruma kidogo. No. Because you can use your brains. So All now right. let me ask you. So that's the situation. Uh-huh. Yes. And maybe forgiven for this. Mm. I felt very embarrassed the other day when the Japanese premier came here. Mm-hmm. So what do you think him <laughs> and his delegations were feeling or thinking when they met the Kenyans yeah. and they saw us? Yeah. Yes. I know. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. So, as I said, it's important we make sure we use facts and figures to make the wise decisions. Mm. Let me give you another practical example. Mm-hmm. I've talked about natural resources. Now let's go to the agricultural part of it. Mm-hmm. In 2021, Kenya, um, we were the sixth largest producers of avocado. Mm-hmm. I think we produced about 471,000 uh, tons. Mm-hmm. And the country earned 14.48 billion. Mm-hmm. That translates to 35 shillings per kilo. Okay. Yes. And unfortunately, the other day, last week in the news, I saw farmers complaining that they're only getting 54 shillings for their coffee. And so they're uprooting the coffee. Hmm. 54 shillings per kilo. Per kilo. So they were complaining. It's not enough to pay them. Exactly. So they're uprooting the better plant avocados. Mm. But as we were growing up, we were told our coffee is the black gold. That sure. was our black gold. Mm. And our coffee is unique. Is our avocado unique? No. It's not. No. But our coffee is unique. And now, for, uh, in the 80s, we were doing over 130, 140,000 tons. In the year 2021, Kenya produced 43,308 tons. And we made 33.08 billion. Mm-hmm. Note, avocado is 471,000 tons. Coffee, 43,000. 43,000. Yes. The other one is for, so, avocado, we, grew, uh, we produce more than 10 times mm-hmm. the coffee. Mm. But coffee, uh, out of the 43,308 tons, we made 33.08 billion. That translates to 764 shillings per kilo. Mm-hmm. So, Stephanie, let me ask you. You're yeah. the Japanese, eh? You see me mm-hmm. uprooting my black gold coffee, which is giving me 764 shillings per kilo. To plant, to happily plant avocado, which is giving me 35 shillings per kilo. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense at all, at all, at all. Wow. Uh-huh. We've just been emotional and we are just, we, let's put it, as you said, we are just not being bright. Mm-hmm. So it's time we need to be, to change. Mm-hmm. Now, the effort the president is putting, the executive is putting on this housing issue, if they were to put that the in same. coffee, things would change. As it is right now, our farmers, mm-hmm. they normally get between two to three kilos per bush, per tree, mm-hmm. as opposed to 30, 30 kilos per, per, tree. per tree. Now imagine if the president, if the government was to try to help the farmers, mm-hmm. let's raise these two to three kilos. First, let's, our first target, let it be 10 kilos, mm. then go to 15, 20. Do you know, first of all, there are about, there are over 800,000 small scale Farmers, mm-hmm. small farmers, eh? there yeah. were 800,000 of them. Mm-hmm. Imagine if government was to try to help them to raise the production from 2 to 3 kilos to 10 kilos. 10 kilos. What will happen? This is about 3 to 5 times mm-hmm. what is being produced. Yeah. Let's just assume each farmer employs an extra 2 people. Not more, just 2. 2 people. Mm. Yes, and then uh, there are 800,000 of them. Mm-hmm. How much will that be? Two times 800,000. 1.6 million jobs. 1.6 mi- wow. We've gotten to the 1.6 <laughs> million jobs that the houses are trying to create. Exactly. And this is more sustainable. It's more sustainable. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, if they, apart from helping the farmers grow the, I mean, raise the production from 2 to 3 kilos to 10 kilos, and mm-hmm. then 15 kilos to 20 kilos, that will mean more people are still being employed. Eh? Mm-hmm. Another thing the government needs to do, they need to set up a structure whereby the farmers are allowed to sell their coffee to anybody and everybody. Yeah. This current system we have is what the British left us with. Mm-hmm. Or whoever, whatever system we have is not working. Yeah, clearly. It's not working at all. And that's why our production has dropped from 130,000. Now we are doing 40. I'm sure this year it will even be less than that. Mm. Yet this is our black gold. Mm-hmm. 
at least our coffee, we are the kings. You know, we, we can pride ourselves. The, we can pride ourselves. Yeah. Just like the way Faith Kipegon the other day, she won the marath uh, sorry, My the 1500. Mm. And we are happy. Our coffee, we are second to none. Mm -hmm. But we are throwing it away. Because we... Yes, we are not... Because of emotion. Em yes. No, let's be blunt. Hmm? Bad decisions. Bad decisions. So we need to change. Stop mm -hmm. making these bad decisions. And then, apart from that, mm -hmm. let's say you're government. And I'm the farmer. Yeah. Now, it's, the government needs to collect taxes. Mm -hmm. Because they need to pay the debts. And they need to run government. Instead of just squeezing every last coin from us. Mm -hmm. I believe the approach they should take is to first enrich us. True. See how to make us rich. Mm -hmm. Once we are rich, it's then. easier for us to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. we, since we're talking about the coffee uh, example, let's continue with it. Eh? Mm -hmm. Right now, a uh, coffee harvester, mm -hmm. they normally, when they go to pick the cherries, they normally use 20 kilo containers, the debes, and they normally, they're normally paid 100 shillings per 20 kilos. Mm -hmm. So that's about 5 shillings per kilo. Okay. Good, a good harvester can harvest about five of them mm -hmm. and will get 500 shillings. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, our farmers, as I mentioned, they were paid 54 shillings, or they're being paid 54 shillings per kilo. Good quality coffee. Okay. If you go to the supermarket to buy good quality coffee, the premium coffee, mm -hmm. it goes for about, the last time I checked, it was 1,620 shillings for 100 grams. Mm -hmm. For 100 grams. 100 grams. Okay. So a kilo, that's 16,200 shillings. Hmm. Stephanie, you are planting coffee. You get You it. are paid 54 shillings per kilo. <laughs> yeah. I, the broker, or uh, the person who's adding value to it, if I'm the one who's adding value, I send some brokers or people to buy from you, you get 54 shillings. Mm -hmm. I go, I process it. Get I sell it at 16,200 per kilo and pay you 54 shillings. Very unfair. Exactly. Balance. So, yes. And it said that one of the greatest reasons why evil succeeds is when good people choose to do nothing. Mm. Now and they keep quiet. Yeah. Exactly. Now here, the good people should be our parliament mm -hmm. because they're the ones who are making laws. So they should make laws such that you as a farmer, mm -hmm. at a minimum, at least earn 25% of the retail price of the coffee. True. So out of the 16,000... 200, at least get 4,000 shillings. Exactly. That makes sense. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are getting 54 shillings, then I tell you, uh, I need some uh, of it as tax, 3% here, 2% uh, there, another... You would definitely be overwhelmed by it. You wouldn't accept. Yes. But now, you as a farmer, mm -hmm. I as government, I structure the law such that now you are earning 4,000 shillings. It will be easy for me to do Then taxed. I come and I tell you, just pay me 25%, 1,000 shillings. That would be fine. Won't you be happy? Exactly. And I you'll would. grow more. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then if you grow more, you employ more people, you harvest more, I get more. Yeah. Governments get more. So everyone's happy at the end of the day. Yes. You know. And then, apart from, you know, as the farmer getting the 3,000 shillings, mm -hmm. governments should, should structure the law such that even the pickers, the growers, mm -hmm. the, the, the laborers, they should earn something from it. Mm -hmm. So instead of earning five shillings per kilo, for let's say for the harvesters, mm -hmm. at least let them earn a hundred shillings per kilo. Per kilo. So a twenty debit, a twenty uh, kilo container, instead of earning a hundred shillings, the person will earn two thousand shillings. Mm -hmm. So if they get five debits, five containers, times five, that's ten k, ten thousand. That's good money. So now, mm -hmm. imagine you are earning first five hundred shillings. Then government structures it such that now you are earning ten thousand shillings. Then they yeah. tell you. Give us 25%, give, give us 2,500 as tax. Mm -hmm. Why it remains 7,500. Yeah, that would make sense. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, we are poor out of choice. <laughs> yes. It's by choice. It's by choice. Because we have all that we need. We have all that we need. All we need is just to make the right decisions the right way. I know government is pushing for this uh, housing levy and the finance bill the way it is. Mm -hmm. And maybe they sat down with the advisors and they thought that is what is best. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure if they listen to the people's heart, mm -hmm. people are crying. People are not happy. And people have solutions like you do have solutions. Yes. So now that's what you say now go to plan B with Anthony Kerori. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
<laughs> you have the plan B. <laughs> yeah, let's look for the plan. There's plan A, the finance bill as it is. Mm -hmm. So why don't you look for the plan B? Plan B. And then you look at not working. what makes sense. Mm -hmm. Imagine if, for instance, and this is just coffee I'm only talking about, eh? we reached a place whereby we are, every bush is producing just 20 kilos, mm -hmm. or 15 to 20 kilos. From 2 to 3 kilos, if you reach 15 to 20 kilos, how many people will be employed? And then now you as the farmer, you're allowed to sell to anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. Do you know why that is important? Yeah. Our coffee is the very best in the world. Mm -hmm. What will happen, the Americans, the Europeans, the Asians, the Australians, and all the people who love taking coffee, they will come to Kenya to buy it from the farmer. Directly. So what's that? Yeah, directly. So mm -hmm. what happens first to a tourism industry? We boost it. We're already boosting it. Mm -hmm. Then when they come to buy, what happens to the price when the demand is high? It goes up. It goes up. <laughs> More for us. More for us. <laughs> yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It's a win-win. Yeah. However, uh, when I was presenting to the committee, mm -hmm. there's someone who said that the Finance and uh, National Planning Committee, mm -hmm. these things might take about a year or two. What mm -hmm. happens in the here and now? What can we do tomorrow? To the, yeah. Yes. There's something called the Preferential Procurement Master Role. Mm -hmm. This is a list of 334 products that the government identified, like the Kenyan government, mm -hmm. it identified, it, pre uh, it, created, it made a list of 334 products made in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, this was on, uh, I believe it was 8th of July 2020, during that time of Corona. And then the head of public service at the time, directed all state and public agencies, that's basically government, they should exclusively procure, exclusively buy the 334 products. That is, okay. none of those products should be imported unless local capacity has been exhausted. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful idea, mm -hmm. but we did not implement it. Or let me rephrase it, since I'm not in government, the government did not implement it. <laughs> yeah. This is something they can implement. They are assuming when tomorrow? Mm -hmm. So yeah. by next week or this month of June, they can, they can implement it. Mm -hmm. Why is it important? I have looked at that list. There are some companies that are, there are some products in that list that you find only being made by one SME manufacturer. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? If that company stops making whatever product it is, there's a 100% importation of the same. Okay. Yes. Now, if government was to support such an SME manufacturer, this small manufacturer will grow either into a medium-sized or a large corporate, mm. employing very many, many Kenyans. Many people. Yes. And every time, we, and then it, that, this uh, tilts our balance of trade a bit more to our favor. Mm. Because we'll be now produce, we'll be now, the government will be using mm -hmm. what is locally available. And therefore, you see right now, our balance of trade is negative. We import more than we export. We export, okay. So, even if we don't export, if we can uh, manufacture locally, we are reducing on the importation. Mm -hmm. So that's good for us and it's also creating jobs for us. Mm -hmm. So if government can implement the uh, preferential procurement master role immediately, that's an immediate win. From July, that's, that would be an immediate win. It's an immediate win. Another immediate win. Hmm. I remember a few years ago, not so many, maybe two or three, mm -hmm. I saw in the news, people complaining, these were senior people, senior politicians, that that time they were, should I say in the opposition, now they're in government, mm -hmm. that the government was getting very expensive loans. Instead of going to institutions that will give them one, two, three percent, they go to institutions that will give nine percent interest. Yeah. And they alluded to something like a kickback. Mm -hmm. Now that whoever are in government are in government, why don't they identify the very expensive loans? Mm -hmm. And then let's say it's two, three, four, five trillion out of the eight, nine trillion uh, debt that we have. And then get the same from institutions that can lend the same amount at lower interest rates. Mm -hmm. You know, 1% from a trillion is a lot of money. I think that's 10 billion Ten saved. Lot, yeah. Yes. So if you get come from 9% to maybe 3%, that's 6%. That's 60 billion. 60 billion, Can, that's a lot of money. How much was the expressway? Uh, <laughs> I think okay. around the same amount, eh? Yeah. Yes. So that's, okay. <laughs> so you can have it's many expressways, mm. or at least many roads can be built in many other places, mm -hmm. or many other things, eh? Just from getting... Just... Yes, at a, 
smaller rate. Just a smaller rate. Mm. There are very many things wow. that can be done. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, wow, <laughs> this is very interesting, you know, just looking at mm -hmm. what we have internally yes. Yes. and uh, making the most out of it to yes. increase, uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, our production, a production yes. create employment, mm -hmm. and eventually that will lead to wealth creation, Yes, I believe. Yes. Maybe talk about mm -hmm. wealth creation. What, what exactly is uh, wealth creation? What does someone get to a mm -hmm. place where they are wealthy now? For, uh, for you to be wealthy, you first need to be rich. Mm -hmm. And then the surplus becomes your wealth. Okay. Yes. Now, government here wants, let's, I'm going back to government because they are core, mm -hmm. they are central in creating the wealth. Mm -hmm. The natural resources, at the end of the day, who makes the decisions on how they'll be used? The government. It's government. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm going back to government. Mm. So, all I'm simply saying is, we have all we need here. All that is required is the proper utilization. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, right now, we are complaining. I mean, look at the figures that I said. We are living a lifestyle of 21,000 with all the resources that we have. <laughs> Last week, farmers were complaining, I saw in the news, mm. that they grew their coffee and now they've been paid 54 shillings. Yeah. What is that? So they said, we better uproot this. Coffee. Then in another clip, I saw someone says, I rather plant avocados like another neighbor of mine did. <laughs> and get profit. Of 35 shillings. So when you look at the bigger picture, it doesn't make sense. But central to this is government. So for us to be wealthy, first we need to be rich. Hmm. For us to be rich, we need to make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. These right decisions need to be based on facts and figures. Mm -hmm. We need to make deliberate decisions based on facts and figures. Mm -hmm. And also, we need to note, nobody has a monopoly yeah. on wisdom. Nobody has a monopoly on intelligence. Mm -hmm. So we should not berate the government or hit them that they are making bad decisions. Mm -hmm. Of course, the government, the president, he must have his own advisors. Mm -hmm. And they've done the best that they can. And the best that they can, we've seen it as the finance bill. Mm -hmm. And maybe when they were crafting it, it made a lot of sense to them. But kikujakwa okay, ground. Common mananchi. Common mananchi. What do you say? We two need different kwa ground. We two need different kwa ground. <laughs> <laughs> Things are different. Eh? Yeah. We are happy here, but guys at the ground. Are suffering. Are suffering. Crying. Yes. Mm, true. Now, it's a shame that we are suffering mm -hmm. and we have so many resources, so many opportunities. But the way I've seen the government, it's thinking in terms of how much more do you have? How much more can I remove from your pocket? Mm -hmm. How much is in this pocket? How much, how how much? much is in your jacket? How much is I in know. your handbag? Exactly. What have you left at home? How much? <laughs> have yeah? you hidden? How? I'm coming, you know. <laughs> yes. And yes. Kenyans have really made memes out of it, especially the youth. Mm -hmm. And people are laughing about it, but people are crying. People still. are really crying, yes. Mm -hmm. So government just needs to tilt, change a bit, mm. make us rich. And then it's okay to tax us. Because we'll have we will supply. have more than enough. We'll have enough. Yes, for and you then to also take. we need also to be a bit careful. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for instance, how much time do we have so that I know whether I should continue? Or well, <laughs> my producer <laughs> is yet to tell me, but <laughs> I think we have some minutes—a couple of minutes, maybe okay. twenty. Oh, good. Mm. Uh, the former governor of Makueni, mm -hmm. he built the Makueni hospital. Eh? It was, it costed 130, I think 130, 135 million. Mm -hmm. And it was a big, big, big hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, there are 290 constituencies mm -hmm. in the country. Do you have a calculator there? Oh, yeah. Let, let, me, let me get quick. And the viewers can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that McQueen Hospital, mm -hmm. it costed 100 and about 30 million. And mm -hmm. it's a very, very big hospital with 200 bed capacity. There are 290 constituencies. Mm -hmm. uh, 90, do, yeah. 135 million, let's change it into, billio, into billions, mm -hmm. is 0.135 of a billion, to make it easy. Okay. Uh -huh. So, so 0.135 of a billion. Point? 135. Uh, 135. Times 290 constituencies. 290. That's that. 
391.5 billion billion okay good i want us to see how much a trillion is eh? mm -hmm. so if you look at the things that government needs to provide hospital is one of them education mm -hmm. uh, roads and should we say water those are four core things right yeah so that came you said it came to how much 391.5 391.5 mm -hmm. let me save that figure for you okay 391.5 <laughs> eh? uh -huh. then mm -hmm. let's so every constituency can have such a hospital every constituency. not county Const every constituency, constituency okay can have such a hospital mm -hmm. right yeah okay the, then imagine if you were to build schools of the same amount. Mm -hmm. So just multiply that by two. Times two. Yes. Uh, 783 billion. That's 783 billion, yes. Mm -hmm. And then there are 290 constituencies. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say every constituency uh, we invest a billion mm -hmm. for water. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I multiply that. No, no, no. You add 290. Sorry. Yes. yes. 290. Uh -huh. 1,073 billion. So that's basically a trillion, yes? Yes, yes, a trillion. Yes. And then let's say we put every constituency a, tri a billion for roads. Mm -hmm. 290. Mm -hmm. That'll be 1.36, 1.363 trillion. So just slightly above a trillion. Mm -hmm. And we have all that. Covered. Every constituency. Country. Yeah. We'll have a hospital like that one, 200 bed capacity. Mm -hmm. Every cool. constituency will have schools. And you know, building a hospital is more expensive than a school. Yeah. So it will basically be bigger schools. Mm -hmm. We'll have dams and piped water in every constituency. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have roads worth a billion in every constituency. Wow. That is just one, basically a billion. Uh, sorry, a, a trillion. trillion. How much is our debt? Why? <laughs> we have now around nine, it. nine trillion. Nine trillion. So, what That's happened to the other eight trillion? How, how was it used? Because in our constituency, where, where I come it? from, we don't even have a level, a level four hospital. Mm. They have, we have got very few kilometers of roads. Mm -hmm. Many places don't have piped water. So, where, where did it go? Where did it go? And this is just one trillion. So, what happened to the other eight trillion? Wow, good question. So one Pushing thing it. the government also needs to do mm -hmm. is we are talking about creating wealth. Mm -hmm. the, the reason why I brought this up mm -hmm. is because the Auditor General for the last few years, it's like he or she has been singing musical, played musical chairs, you know? <laughs> yeah? Dancing a lot. Dancing a, a, a what has he, he or she been saying? Mm -hmm. That the government, or as a country, we lose at least 30% of our budget. A third of the budget is lost. Mm. Basically, it is stolen. Oh. So that means out of three trillion budget, about a, a trillion is gone. Is gone. Mm. So government also needs, as they're thinking of creating wealth, you see, there is enough in this country, there is enough for, this is what I believe, there is enough for everybody's need, mm -hmm. but not enough for everybody's greed. Wow, I love that. No, thank there you. is enough for everybody's need, need but, not, but enough not enough for everybody's, everybody's greed. greed. Yes, but, but not, not enough.